Hello, hello, welcome to Shady Why. I'm Marilyn, and today we have a Q&A, some jewelry, and another drawing for the Christmas holiday drawing giveaway. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. The question and answers was such a great success. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So today we're going to do a few more questions and then um, get to some jewelry. And then of course we will do our drawing. If you haven't been here before, my husband Barry and myself are part-time resellers. We sell on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, and YouTube. So anything you see today is for sale unless I state otherwise. Anything you're interested in, just send us an email at one shady and why at gmail.com. So let's just get to the questions and answers. Fun surprises. Cindy asks, how is baby doing? She is good. She actually um, has been sleeping a lot lately. So I need to take a video and maybe tomorrow night I will take a video of her and show you all how she really is doing. Let's see. So thank you, Cindy, for asking about baby. She is the star in the family and she lets us know it. Desert Girlie would like to know what gave you the idea to do a YouTube channel on selling jewelry? Well, actually, uh, my husband, Barry, wanted to do the YouTube channel and he was doing um, some air, con he owns an air conditioning company. So um, he was doing some AC. We also are doing a remodeling of our 1934 farmhouse that we have in North Carolina and so we wanted to do those things and he um, wanted me to start doing them and so I was so nervous so I started doing um, I was started watching YouTube a lot and I saw these thread up boxes and I'm like what is that I had never even heard of thread up besides the fact that my niece Stephanie actually used to work for ThreadUp in Georgia. So I only knew that it was an online consignment store. So that's the only thing I knew. And I thought the purses were cool and I needed a new purse. So I thought, well, you know, I'll order a purse um, box from ThreadUp and get a new purse. Uh, that's a good way of doing it. So I got some purses and I just wasn't finding what I want. I'm one of those people who are very strange. I need outside pockets on my purse. So I just kept on and on. And I finally, um, almost, I believe, in the second to the last box that I got of um, handbags or coach handbags, I got a Tory Burch. And it happened to have a pocket on the outside. So love it. It's a beautiful purse. And um, I have been primarily selling on eBay, Etsy, and Poshmark as jewelry. So it was just a flow of what I was more comfortable with. I never was comfortable doing the purses because <laughs> if you go back and look at my original um, YouTube videos, it's like, oh, I'm constantly fighting the purses, holding them up. You can't see a thing. It was, it was not good. So thank you all of you who started with me very early and stayed on. I really appreciate it because y'all really watched some bad YouTube videos. Um, so it was just something that I had been doing. So it was, as um, one of our viewers, Irene says, that's my lane. I should stay in it. So um, that's what I did. I stayed in what I know. So thank you, um, Juliana, for asking that question. Let's see. Hoarder's Haven wants to know thread up boxes. Let's see what fun things come in a thread up box. Are they hard to get? Well, it seems like, yes, I used to have no problem getting them. Um, they always were very, very consistent that they'd come out um, on certain days. Um, then that changed. That didn't stay like that very long at all. And then they, I couldn't find them at all. 
that was the coach and the handbag. I thought those were easy to get. And then whenever I started trying to get jewelry, not so much. I just couldn't find it at all. And then lately, um, it's really hard to find. You just happen upon it. Um, unlike Goodwill, you know, they're set 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Friday. That's easy to do. You have all your information in there. And you just sit there and refresh your um computer constantly i do everything on the computer i don't do anything on the phone except for take my videos so that's i always refresh and it's, it seems to help so thank you hoarders haven for asking that question go granny go wants to know how do you decide on a price for the jewelry you sell well like i said i've been doing jewelry for such a long time it has a lot of different things um Barry and I were talking about it today, and it's very simple. I, I used to be a real estate agent, and I was uh, had to do comparative market analysis, the CMA, to see what's sold in the neighborhoods, what the houses have in comparison. It's pretty much the same thing. So we do CJAs, which is comparative jewelry analysis. You look at solds on Poshmark, on Etsy, on eBay, online, on different things. You find solds and you compare them. When you put things online, you have to think about it that you are um, taking the time to take the photos and do the research and list it and pay the fees and it takes a while. So you have to have more in it online. Whereas on YouTube, luckily, we're not paying those fees. We're not having to take the photos. We're just doing the videos, which I really enjoy. And I really thank you all for watching them. Um, so it's just different. However, um, you have to be sure to cover your cost. I want to give my subscribers a thank you. So I try to give a 50 to 60% discount off what I would do it online because I could do that because there's no fees. But no matter what, I mean, this is a business and we are trying to cover our fees um, in our cost and we want to make a profit. So I always try to do that. Man, I am rambling tonight. Sorry, let's move on. So thank you for your question. Go, Granny, go. And just by the way, if anybody doesn't think uh, or would like more information on any of these answers that I give, just um, shoot me a comment and say, can you elaborate more on this? And I'll try to keep my answers a little shorter so we can get through quite a few of them. Donna Herlinger said that I do a good job editing. Well, thank you. I do edit out things that um, just me rambling mostly. <laughs> That's what I generally try to do a lot of or making a lot of noise as noises bother me when I watch other people's videos. For some reason or another, I have the most incredible hearing. Um, I can hear and smell like you wouldn't believe. So I try not to have those things um, affect the video because I, I think it does pull away from it if you're sitting there constantly crinkling paper or um, like the day we had um, in that thread up box, that paper that was driving me insane because it was making so much noise. So thank you, Donna, for mentioning that I do a good job editing. Um, Deborah with Timeless Jewel by Deborah wants to know what is my favorite era of jewelry? Well, Deborah, um, that's a good question because I think I love everything. If my first thought is probably Art Deco or Victorian, I love those. I love the romance of those times, Art Nouveau. I uh, love that. But then again, I love the 40s and I love the um, Sonic Age and I love the 60s, you know, I love the groovy, I love the 50s, I love the 70s. And believe it or not, I even am starting to really enjoy some of this stuff coming out that was in the 80s, um, you know, because that's all vintage now. Anything 20 years or um older is vintage. I'm very vintage. <laughs> so I just like that. I just enjoy um, all eras of jewelry. So thank you, Deborah, for that question. Lori wants to know what is the most fantastic jewelry 
find you've gotten from a jewelry jar? Well, that's a good question, definitely, as all of these questions are great. I would say the best thing I ever got in a jewelry jar has to be that, um, I think it might have been our second jewelry jar that we did. It was a tiny little jewelry jar, um, but we found an 18 karat gold pearl, beautiful, like nine millimeter uh, tie tag. Uh, gorgeous. I still have that and I haven't even tried to sell it. Um, it's fantastic as I'm a June baby, so I love pearls. Not that I need a side deck, but I have to say that's one of, I'm trying to think, is that the first time I ever got an 18 karat? I'm not sure, but it, it's beautiful. Thank you, Lori. Deb wants to know, how did you get your start reselling jewelry? Well, funny, I started reselling jewelry because we bought our 1934 farmhouse and I started going to the auction to furnish it. And I have always been a antique vintage store shopper. Me and my mom used to go on weekends and it was always so fun. We enjoyed antiques together. I used to have a um, antique, strange antique hat and um, gloves. That was my first collections when um, I was in my early 20s, probably. Uh, that was the first big collection that I would say that I started with. And, but, so we got the farmhouse, we were doing that. And so we were collecting a lot of antiques and vintage things from the 30s and 40s. We wanna make it time uh, correct with the farmhouse. So, we got so much stuff. It was like, I was just really enjoying it. I had always wanted to do antiques. Uh, so I got a booth and they were hard goods mainly. And um, hard goods are anything that is um, not furniture. It's um, small collectibles. And I did furniture and small collectibles and things like that. And I was just going to the auction all the time and they had this jewelry counter that they have had for over 20 years. And I just started really enjoying the jewelry. So um, I just started phasing into the jewelry. So that's how I got started in reselling jewelry. So thank you, Deb, for the question. Uh, let's see. Chris wants to know the best way to find out how to find a Tiffany and Company maker's mark. I have a heart pendant, but don't know how to find out if it's markings is fake. And then I know she sent us a follow-up question. Let's see if I can find her follow-up question. She said, She's typed in the basic descriptions, but nothing came up. And her main problem is that the Tiffany and Company 925 is lasered on the outside of the heart. So she's thinking it's fake. Definitely be watching. So I would say, Chris, that um, Tiffany and Company is probably the highest um, copied or, or faked a uh, piece of company or company that there is out there. Anything that's popular or anything like that is definitely, um, I mean, come on, they're not going to fake a, um, you know, J crew, even though they kind of do, they, um, copy anything that's popular. So, um, how many companies are doing what J crew's doing because they were, really good at it. So can you think of that on a big scale or uh, that things are expensive? So of course they're gonna copy it. I have to say that my first thought is if it's Tiffany and Company, I automatically think, I start with the basis that it's not real. And then I move from there. I go to Tiffany and Company and I go online and look for um, how to determine a Tiffany and Company, real piece versus a fake piece. It's not only the weight, the size, the font, the um, every single little thing. 
tells you, and it's not just one thing, it's every little thing, the weight, the size, the way the um, writing is, the way the T is, the Y, the and, every little piece, um, and they're going to foul up because it cannot be exact. So just keep looking for that and definitely go on to websites. And that's how I find things. I type in how to find a fake versus real Tiffany and Company piece. And if you aren't finding uh, anything like it, that's even more of a worry. So good luck, Chris. I know you're an Australian, it's hard. And thank you for watching from Australia. We appreciate you. Um, so we'll see what we can find out. Um, all we can do is try. Thank you for your question. Let's see. Teresa asks, have you researched Abe Saint Laurent Jewelry Company? And if so, what you know about them? I actually have a couple pieces coming up that I'm going to be doing research on them. So I will let you know on that because I haven't started that research, but it's coming shortly. So I'll let you know. Thank you, Teresa. Teresa also wants to know, what do you normally find the thread of boxes that we already answered morning or afternoon? Actually, I somebody told me the other night that they saw thread of boxes come up at 1130 at night, Eastern Standard Time. I didn't look, but they told me that and I was like, wow. So I think it's any time. So don't say, oh, it's after six o'clock, so it's not going to be there. So it's pretty much any time. Cat Lady in the Attic wants to know, what do you use to edit your videos and how do you re record? I have an iPhone 12 Pro Plus and I record on that and I edit on iMovie. I'm a very Apple oriented person. My computer's Apple. Um, I've had Apple phones and it's hard for me to change anything. However, I do have a new camera and I am going to shortly be using that. It's a Sony ZV-1 and uh, it's the reason I purchased it is it's supposed to be very, very um, de great on details. So we might have um, a little learning curve <laughs> with me, guys. It might be a huge learning curve because I'm not great with technology. So, but if that's the case, stick with me. <laughs> but I hope to bring that out shortly and start trying to use it. Um, so thank you, Cat Lady in the Attic. I love your name. And Laura wants to know, where do you find your art deco? She really loves them. Well, I find them all over. Um, auction, uh, estate sales, uh, vintage and antique stores. So wherever I go, I do see them. They are getting harder and harder to find, um, but that is generally where I do locate them. This is, okay, our last question of the day um, is going to be from Cindy. And her question is, how can you part with all your beauties? I think I would become a hoarder. That is too funny, Cindy. I um, made a promise to myself that it had to be spectacular for me to really hold on to it. Um, as I say that, I have a whole little box up there that um, I put it all out there for you guys to purchase. However, if you don't purchase it, it's like, boom, it's going in my little box. Um, so, um, but hoarding, no, I try not to, I try to put everything available. Um, I might scoot some stuff over to the side if I don't know what it is and I need to do some research, but I try to be sure that you get to see whatever I see. So that's it for the questions today. I'm going to answer some more tomorrow and let's move on to jewelry. Thanks so much for joining me. Hello, hello, we are back for jewelry. And tonight we only have a couple pieces of jewelry, but we have some fantastic Victorian and Art Deco pieces. I thought y'all might enjoy. This I just got at the auction. It is a fabulous, it is a Victorian opera purse. It is stunning. 
It is gorgeous. Let me move this out of the way. Look at this. Isn't this just adorable? Look at this. This isn't adorable. This is just stunning. It is a considered an opera purse or an evening, which was an evening bag back then. And it still has the chain. And look inside. Check that out. The original lining, oh, that is, and it goes all the way in. Is that amazing? And it is some serious weight to it. All these seed beads, and it has all this beadwork. Look at this. I'm sure it's missing some, but I can't tell. Maybe up here a little bit, but look at that. That's the side, the back, probably some missing beads right here, but this is in stunning condition for a Victorian opera purse. Isn't that just spectacular? It is 10 inches by five and a half inches with a seven inch drop chain. Um, these online that don't even look this good, I mean, nowhere near this condition, is like three to $500. Isn't that amazing? I'm just in awe to find something of this beauty. And it obviously is green. Look at that. Look at those beads. It's just, oh, it's just so beautiful. So um, I am asking um 200 for this one um and that is a steal so that is just gorgeous this is a compact mother of pearl it is from um from the 20s to the 30s and um this is just spectacular it's metal and you push this button right here and it pops open. And look, somebody said it was Aunt Rose's and she had the, still had the cellophane on the blush, um, never used. And then you pull up here and this is where the powder was. Isn't that amazing? There is no powder. Um, but that's just incredible. The mirror is in fabulous condition. Just incredible. So this is um, around 85 to 90 online. So I will do uh, $50 for this. Mm -hmm. the, it just, uh, blows my mind the condition of how well this is still in. And then this one um, is um, enamel and this is so cool. Same thing, great mirror, perfect condition. Um, cellophane still on the blush and you just pull up the same thing by Gurry, G-I-R-E-Y. And this one, you push down here, that's the back. It also was Aunt Rose's. And this is for cigarettes. Isn't that stunning? I haven't been able to find one even similar to this, so I'm going to ask 60 for this and it comes with its own little case, um, so you could carry it around. Isn't that something? It has a little bit of glue, it looks like, right here, but it's in really amazing condition. Let's put Aunt Rose back in here. We don't wanna lose that, because I think that's pretty cool that somebody was cool enough to put who's it belonged to. So did I give a price on this one? This one I think I'm gonna do for um, $60.
And then also in that same lot was this perfume. It's Evening in Paris, 1940s in um, the tube blue. I did not open it and smell it because I probably would start sneezing, but it is halfway full. You can see that it is still halfway full of perfume. And I will do, um, it has a little bit of glue right here that needs to be cleaned off. But that's pretty amazing. Um, this is running between 50 and 60. Actually, there was one that was 75. But I will do um, 35 on the evening in Paris. And that one had no perfume in it that um, I found. Then uh, going to perfume, I'm going to Art Deco. Isn't this amazing? Look at this. I have showed this before, and this is one that I am releasing that I had as a catch and release. And trust me, this is hard. This is um, a faceted glass, just amazing. It is graduated and it has little pearls in between each bead. And um, look at this clasp. It has sterling on the back written out. It is a box clasp. Isn't that beautiful? This is just stunning in my opinion. This is 16 inches and it was in my personal collection. And I am going to let this one go today for um, $65. Oh, that, that's hard. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It I do not ever clean um, the jewelry, but look at that. Isn't that amazing? It still has some little bit of, I mean, it, you know, it's a hundred years old, if older, this could be from the Victorian age looking at this class, um, more so than the Art Deco. And it just blows my mind how gorgeous it is. So beautiful. We have this clasp, uh, brooch I mean. It says, let's see what it says. It says sterling and it says Germany and it has a maker's mark that's I think it's an um no it's an in in a circle but that is gorgeous no missing rhinestones. Uh, these are not rhinestones. These are marcasites. No missing marcasites. <laughs> I don't know why it is, but every time I do a video, um, my phone blows up. But it's really amazing because the top part is left in a silver um, with the back being a gold. Um, so it is um, vermeil. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love that. So I'm going to say let's do um, $30 on this one. This is stunning. And the last one we have today is this. Is this crazy? Uh, this just blows my mind. This is Art Deco 100%. It is sterling silver and marcasite with a, a blue a glass. And look at that glass. Isn't that just translucently beautiful? It has no missing marcasites. And this is not um, marked, but I'm sure it is sterling. But I was gonna go ahead and test it for you. There's your blue. And I looked this up online. I've had, this is another one that was in my personal collection. And wow, the price has gone up like you would not believe since I've had it. It um, Somebody did replace the roller clasp on it because it looks a little newer, but everything else looks old and the same. 
So online, a piece that isn't e even this gorgeous um, was um, sold for $300. So I'm going to say let's do, considering it has a um, replaced roller clasp, I'm going to do um, $120 for this one today. Oh, because one of our questions was about... Um, how do I not become a hoarder? So I am releasing a few of my Art Deco pieces um, and Victorian pieces. So there you go. Hello, hello. Here we are for our day five of the Christmas holiday giveaway. Yay! Hope y'all are enjoying this. Um, let's copy our URL from day four, come over here, put it in the, uh, did I do that right? I'm not sure, <laughs> seems awful long. Paste, that is in our comment picker. We're going to fi filter duplicates and we're going to put in our number. We're gonna go over here from one to 200 and pick a number. Keep your fingers crossed that we can do it in one shot. It's 69. Let's come over here, put in 69. See if we have any, oh, we've got some, we're getting the hang of this guys, yay. All right, fingers crossed it's you. So let's go down and see who the winner of day five holiday giveaway is. It is Native Collector. Thank you for explaining on how to use Google Lens and her number, their number is 69. Congratulations, Native Collector. Thank you so much for participating in our Christmas holiday giveaway. If you could please send us an email at one shady ny at gmail.com and we will send you instructions on how to um, get verified and your mailing address and your real name so hopefully everybody's having a wonderful december and happy holidays everybody well there you go what did you think did you enjoy this I love this. This is my happy place. I just love these pieces. I hope you did too. Hope you enjoyed it. And if this isn't your cup of tea, um, I appreciate you sticking with me and hopefully um, enjoying it. So thanks so much. Give us a thumbs up. If you want me to do more questions and answers, be sure to leave some more in the comments and be sure to just know we appreciate you so much. Once again, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe below if you haven't already. If you have, we so appreciate you. We're having a great time and thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us and we will see you on the next one. Bye.